Hello everyone, so welcome to the second video. Um, I hope you, everyone enjoyed the first one. I just wanted to share something else on this one. Um, so basically I wanted to talk a little bit about wave tables, saying that it's actually quite an able, wave, <laughs> able synth, right? Uh, and there's a lot that you can do with it. I'm just gonna give you a couple of examples that they might not be uh, so apparent. I always wanna kind of like give my own twist on things um in regards to the Ableton devices and how far we can push them i think it's always uh you know that's always good um to kind of like you know try things out and uh see where it leads so i've got this house beat right quite a basic house beat there and i'm gonna add wave table next to it um one of the techniques i wanted to quickly share with you is this so if you let's say let's play like a low sort of bass. I mean, that's pretty low. I will probably change it up later. Uh, but for now, that's pretty okay. It's going to play on the offbeat. Right? So it's kind of like a uh, response to the kick drum. Make that mono. Uh, give it a little bit more volume, I think. Um, and let's just play around with the uh, uh, beat. Right. So one of the things that can be quite interesting is this. At the moment, you can see that all these notes have got the same velocity. And if we have a look at the MIDI tab here, we can see that the velocity is applied to the volume, to the amp, right? So we can actually get rid of that. And what we can do instead is we can apply velocity to oscillator one uh, position, right? So as long as the, um, as long as wavetable is in mono, then you can do some really cool things by literally playing around with velocity values. You can actually hear the sound changing from something like a sine to, you know, to like a square or so to. There you go. So it's not somewhere in between. There you go, so that's quite cool. And maybe we can do like a few notes here and play around with them. There and there we go. So let's try it with that. And it should be quite interesting. And it's just a nice way to kind of like add movement to any sound by playing around with velocity. Obviously, it's just the same uh, note, but I think it will work quite well on this particular instance. Right, and obviously we can change that, make that uh, shorter. There you go, right? So that's cool. The other thing as well that you could do if you want to make it really abstract is even adding a MIDI uh, velocity effect, right? And just send it to random, so it randomizes the velocity for you, and then every note is going to be different. Give it a little bit of revert, maybe. Right. And then you can have a constant sound, maybe in the background. Um, possibly, I don't know, we can use this beat in here, so it's pretty high up. Um, that could be quite interesting. That obviously is way too long, as you can hear. So one of the really nice things that we've got here is the fact that we got multiple envelopes, right? So I can say envelope three here, and we can actually say that envelope three, that's not doing anything at the moment. And we can say that envelope three to control the volume of oscillator two, which is absolutely amazing. So I can actually set oscillator two, so it's a very short sort of snippet at the beginning of the sound, rather than being so full. There we go, right? So that could be interesting. Again, maybe a little bit too much reverb there. I always get, um, yeah, I can get carried away with that. It's just nice, um, full. So that's another technique, um, you know, I wanted to share. 
And finally, the other one as well I wanted to quickly show you, which can be quite cool these days. Um, I'm just going to use Wavetable again. And uh, obviously, this, as I said, you know, there's always more things that you can do. Just wanted to share a couple of things that I hope you guys will find are useful in the future. So, for example, one of the things that's really cool is the fact that we can select from a slightly more complex waveform, uh, let's say four month. And you see in the four month, we can actually select from different sort of different vowel types, right? Which is cool. Um, but what, what we can also do, uh, that can be quite creative, is we can actually set this oscillator one position to the actual notes. And obviously if I play a chord, I'm going to set it so it's around in the middle there. Right, so in a sense, basically, it's changing the uh, way plays in the waveform, right? So it's selecting different sort of like R, um, A, E, I, or U sort of sounds, uh, depending on the note that's playing. But if you then, for example, let's say that you add a chord device, uh, just for the sake of it, right? Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna use this lot, um, old school sort of chord device I've created a while back, um, so you can hear look, right? Obviously it's a static, so let's do two things to make it a little bit more dynamic. So LFO one uh, could affect a little bit of the pitch maybe. Let's f make that a little bit faster. We got a little bit, bit sort of like a vibrato there, and and you can see this oscillator one position. Uh, what we could also do is we can maybe set an envelope so it kind of shifts a little bit. It's not static. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna set it so it's gradual, and I'm gonna use envelope two to affect the oscillator one position. And obviously, then we can use maybe something like the noise and spread it. Maybe ease that off a little bit. Right, there we go. So we can do some interesting things like that. And it just sounds quite organic as well, which is one of the nice things about Wavetable too. There you go, right? So anyway, so I wanted to give you a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, some ideas and things that you can do with Wavetable. I hope you enjoy that. Thanks for watching.